Finally, we get to it. We get to the private schools and the six-man ranks. You start with the private schools. Central Texas Christian and Riker get split up. They're in the same classification. Riker goes north, CTCS south. What do you like about the Cougars and the Lions? Yeah, first of all, I thought that that was rather interesting from Taps. I, I, I kind of always think of Riker and, and, and Central Texas as, as kind of uh, connected at the hip. But obviously, you know, the way that realignment came out for Taps, they, they decided to split them up. Uh, you know, Riker goes north, and, and that is definitely, I would say, the uh, probably the easier path uh, w- when you take a look at the at, at the way that Taps uh, is broken down in the Division Three, Division Four uh, situation. Um, they are a team that I think the defense is going to lead the way early. This is a team with a a whopping amount of of experience coming back. They only lose five Letterman from last year's squad. Uh, this is a team that I think could be ready for that leap, especially on the defensive side. That defense kind of leads the way early. I think Riker's got a chance to make some noise in that district. You know, for, for Central Texas, the, the, they are heading south and, and, and heading into the teeth of some really, really talented uh, private school squad. You're talking about in their own district, dealing with Shiner St. Paul, who was a state champion a year ago. You're dealing with San Antonio Holy Cross, who is one of the, the most consistent squads. Hallettsville Sacred Heart, it is a very tough road home, not to mention – Austin, Texas School for the Deaf, which is a really, really good private school squad. Uh, this is a, a Central Texas squad uh, that I am interested to see exactly how they, they kind of replace some key pieces in the secondary. This tends to be a pretty pass-happy district. If they can replace some people in the, in the secondary, they've got a chance to make some noise. Uh, this is a team that I think could be better, but have the same record because the schedule is tougher. That's one of those things that it's going to be interesting to see if they're able to get over the hump uh, this is one of those squads that I think y- you could be talking about watching the games being like, this is a better, better team, but they're just up against uh, some of the very best private schools in the state. You look at the six-man ranks now. You've got Abbott. Abbott is one of those schools. Ever since they won that state championship, they've had good teams. They've just come across better teams and been in districts with better teams. Is that another? Is that kind of what the situation is for the Panthers again? You know, I, I will say that I think that realignment uh, – it kind of depends on, on how you want to view it. On one hand, they got away from Blum, and Blum, of course, is a defending state champion. So that's a, a squad that you don't necessarily want to see as your district company. But they did get dropped in there with a couple of, I think, really dangerous squads in Coolidge and Penelope. Uh, you know, look, uh, I have I have great respect uh, for the, the Abbott coaching staff. I think that what they're able to do every single year is really impressive. Uh, and, and this year, I think that they do, they feel like they've got some experience to keep positions. Uh, this is a team that I think, Feels like they are going to be uh, going to be in the mix simply because of of that. Uh, now, look, the key thing is you got to get past some really tough teams. You got to you got to uh, you're probably fighting with Penelope and Aquila for that second playoff spot. And if you finish second, then guess who you see in the first round? You see Blum. That's not going to be fun either. But I will say that I think I think that Abbott uh, and Terry Crawford have the ability to to climb up into that playoff uh, positioning, uh, which is uh, you know where they expect to be every single year. Then you look at Jonesboro in District 15. This is a reigning state semifinalist who, like Abbott, had to go through Blum, and that's what ended ended their season out there in Heiko last November. Um, when you look at the Eagles, is this a team that is poised to try to get back to at t Stadium? I think they got a great chance. Um, I think that they are probably the favorite in Region 4 to start the year. Eddie Gallegos is really high on this team, specifically because of their, their – um, their experience and if you know depending on who comes out of region three I think that you could say that uh, they've got a great shot to get to a state championship game um, I feel like real you know real I mean, didn't do a ton for them you know the, it's basically the same district they're they're, they're they're probably you know I think that they're the, the favorite to win that district uh, the region's interesting right Lakey May some some teams that I would classify as as sleepers but not necessarily world beaters I think Jonesboro is your favorite to come out of region four uh, and, and because of the experience they have on both sides, uh, of if they can find that 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 playmaker, if they can find that home run threat, then I think that Jonesboro is going to be in the mix for a state championship. Uh, this is a team that that Eddie Gallegos does a fantastic job with that Eagles program. I would expect 2020 to be no different. And that wraps it up. Next up, I guess the the next biggest thing is we got to get on the football field, right? Let's do it. I'm ready. <laughs>